Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about the hierarchy of research evidence. So this is a great visual way to understand what sources of evidence or types of research are the best and which are not the best. Um, so as we move up towards the, the peak of our pyramid here, those are the best sources of evidence and then not so good <laughs> as we move down our, our pyramid. Uh, so I'll just briefly talk about what each of these are. So the very best at the very tip top are meta-analyses. So a meta-analysis is a statistical analysis of data from multiple quantitative studies combined. So if a researcher goes through the literature and finds lots of different studies that are essentially answering, they're asking and answering the same question and collecting similar types of data, that researcher might combine all of those sets of data from the different studies to do a larger analysis. So in a meta-analysis, you end up answering, asking and answering the same question um, but you're able to draw from all of these different sort of banks of data um, to answer it for maybe a broader population or with a, a greater number of participants. The next would be a systematic review. Uh, so that's a compilation and review of all available research to answer a specific question. Um, so there are different databases and organizations who do systematic reviews, like the Cochrane database of systematic reviews is excellent. And so that's where someone is going through and combing the literature, doing a very thorough literature review, and then summarizing the findings, maybe the data, maybe the conclusions uh, from the different relevant studies that were found in that area. So a systematic review would be done instead of a meta-analysis in the case that we can't combine the data. So if the different authors are collecting different types of data, then we're comparing apples and oranges and we can't add them together into one larger database. So instead you would compare the results and the conclusions of, of the different studies, uh, but you wouldn't be able to do a larger data analysis from all of those studies combined. The next would be critically appraised sources. Uh, so that's where we have another uh, sort of database or uh, you know, like what are listed here in this little green box, those are some examples. And in that case, editors would systematically filter and critically appraise the literature. So again, they're doing a literature review and they're compiling and compressing the most meaningful information uh, for consumption by healthcare um, practitioners and clinicians. Um, so it's basically a way that um, somebody is doing a literature review and then finding what is maybe the most valuable, meaningful, important information from the literature um, based on a very unbiased approach um, and then uh, presenting kind of condensed versions and abstracts and things for easier consumption. Uh, because let's be honest, most clinicians and most professionals in general don't have a lot of time to read all of the important articles as they're published in all of these major journals. So that's a great way that that information is sort of condensed and, and delivered. Uh, then after that would be randomized controlled trials. So randomized controlled trials would be one study. So that's the difference um, for the very tip of our pyramid here, those first three, those are looking at multiple studies in an area. Uh, then once we get below there, we start on our randomized controlled trials. Now we are getting to one study at a time. So a randomized controlled trial is the best we can possibly do if we are only considering one study at a time. Uh, so participants are randomized into a control and at least one experimental group to test a condition. So we're testing a condition, so some kind of exposure or treatment or whatever it is that the experimental group is receiving and comparing that to a control group. Uh, then below that would be cohort studies. Uh, so that would be a study that follows two or more groups over time and makes comparisons. So they are not randomized to those groups. We are simply following two or more groups. 
Um, so the way that those groups came to be, that could be in different ways. Uh, they might have been sort of self-selecting or uh, there's different ways that that can happen, but they would not be randomized like in a randomized controlled trial. Then below that are case control studies where we're comparing two groups with different outcomes with respect to a possible, possible causative factor. So maybe you have two groups where one group had this certain outcome and the other group had a different outcome. And so then you're comparing those two groups to try and maybe determine a causative factor or see if your proposed causative factor did have a correlation with the results. Uh, then below that would be case reports and case series. So a case series is the study of a group who receive a treatment, but there's no control. So a case series would be like, um, maybe there's an institution or a group of people and um, a certain treatment or condition is, is administered and you're following to see what happens. So you're not comparing it against a control group who didn't receive the condition, you're simply following a group or a group of people or an institution who did have a treatment or a condition. A case report would be documentation of a single individual or that individual that could be a person or it could be an individual organization depending on the nature of what the condition is um, or the nature of what is being tested. Um, so a case report, there could be a case report about a program implemented um, at a school as an example, um, or it could be a case report about an individual person with maybe a very rare condition um, and maybe it's worthy of, of writing that up and publishing to share that information. Um, then below that last thing would be background information and expert opinion. So in some cases, expert opinion might be the best we can do if there hasn't been good research done on a topic. Uh, so I do, we don't wanna discount that completely because that is meaningful when trying to determine the best course of treatment or um, the best way to work with an individual or an organization or whatever it is that you're doing. Uh, so we don't want to totally discount that, but that is at the very bottom of our pyramid here. So if there are any, if there's any other available research evidence, then that would rank higher than uh, just simple background information and expert opinion. All right. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.